information to you. No. The universe did not provide your food. The universe did not provide your job. The universe did not heal your body and your mind. Putting our trust and our focus just in, you know, self-reliance and trusting in, in, in on man. And I don't mean that in the sense that we shouldn't um, honor the people with more uh, education or, you know, authority. I'm talking about when you worship these, the, you know, these other people, these idols. Why do you call it, you know, why, why do they, why are these idols called teen idols, right? Why are uh, sports, you know, really overboard sports called fanatics? That's where the word fan comes from, fanatics. Right? So w why would you turn to a sports figure for information about your health or finances? If they're truly, if that's what their thing is, you know, basketball, football, whatever, why would you think that that would be the, the source that you should get your information from? Rather than the creator who created your body. It seems to me that you'd want the, the you know, I'd want the manual from the from, from the person that created the, 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 the product. I, I wouldn't want, uh, you know, if I bought a, if I bought a lawnmower, uh, say a snapper or whatever, I wouldn't want, um, you know, some uh, run-of-the-mill, some fly-by-night uh, lawnmower company sending me their manual for the snapper manual. I'd want the created the, cre the person who created that manual. I want their I'd want their who created that lawnmower. I'd want their manual. So why don't we go to the God who created us? He gives us all throughout the Bible. There's all kinds of information on living and life and finance and health and you know joy and actual peace and love. But people are going to all these other sources. You know, horror, horror, horror scopes, <laughs> right? That's not where you get the answers about your life. Oh, it might be fun, it might be entertaining. And every one of those things say for entertainment only, because they even know they are not, they're not credible. How can one? Has it ever occurred to you? How can one horoscope <laughs> reading apply to a million people? not possible how can it meet your direct need but god knows you because god made you in his image he knows you intricately he knows he has the scripture said he has numbered the hairs on your head not he knows the number of hairs like well there's you know there's a million no he has numbered them individually he knows the ones that are there amen and he knows the ones that are missing Lord have mercy on us, right? Help us. But if he knows you that intimately because he created you and made you, then he should be the source that you seek. And him alone. And him alone. These 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 things, these things that people worship and go to people, you know, yes, you can it is wise to seek counsel. But you don't, you, you, you want that counsel to be also wise counsel, right? You wouldn't go to a two-year-old and ask a two-year-old, how should I handle my budget? You understand? So the Lord here says it specifically. For the spirit of harlotry has led them astray, and they have played the harlot, withdrawing themselves from subjection to their God. And if you're, if you're, the Bible says, the word of God says, if you basically put it in common sense or language, common language, if you ain't for me, you are against me. If you're not walking with the Lord and in subjection to his commands and his knowledge, then you obviously are in subjection to some other God, a lesser God, a demonic God, for all you know, right? Because you've turned away. This is why it's so important. If we're going to be successful in our spiritual warfare, we have to use the tools that the almighty God has prepared for us 
and the knowledge from the Almighty God on how to do it. Have you ever noticed that in all in many of the wars or conflicts in the Bible, God actually reduced the number of the army? Like, you know, he sent 300 men against 10,000 to let them know that it was not their power. It was not in their mechanisms, but it was with the success was from and with and through the Almighty God. In verse 13, they sacrifice on the tops of mountains and they burn incense upon the hills and under oaks, poplars, and terrans because there the shade is good. Therefore, your daughters play the harlot and your sons' wives commit adultery. You remember the scripture where Jesus was sitting at the well and the woman from Samaria comes up and he's having a conversation with her and he says to her, she says, we worship these gods over in the mountains on the mountaintop. And Jesus says, you don't even know these gods you're talking about and what mountains. You don't even know. And here we see this sort of the same message. They're sacrificing on the tops of mountains and burning incense and going under oak trees and you know all this other stuff. Worshipping things people and places and the, the creation instead of the creator. And, you know, if you don't truly know what that, that stuff is, if you don't truly understand the occult and the demonic uh, influences that are out there, you can get yourself into deep trouble. How do people get into cults and, and seeking after, um, you know, uh, get rich schemes and pyramid schemes and becoming parts of these societies and clubs and all these things and get themselves into trouble the more the deeper and deeper they go and then they and then they suddenly realize oh my gosh i didn't know i didn't know what this was before you get involved in those kinds of things you better look better look seriously if it is not of god and you have to keep testing and keep looking. The Lord himself told you to test the spirits and see if they be of God. In verse 14, he says, I will not punish your daughters when they play the harlot, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery. For the fathers and husbands themselves go aside in order to be alone with women who prostitute themselves for gain. And they sacrifice at the altar with dedicated harlots who surrender their chastity in honor of the goodness of the goddess. God is what we're talking about. Remember months and months ago we talked about the different goddesses that were worshipped. Therefore these people, therefore the people, without understanding, shall stumble and fall and come to ruin. Now, before you get it twisted, right, as they say today, he did not say, I I, I, I will not punish your daughters when they play the harlot, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery, uh, as, as if to say that there would be no judgment. What he was meaning, if you go on to read, for the fathers and the husbands themselves go aside in order to be with women who prostitute themselves for gain. Right. So in other words, he's he's saying, yeah, I'm not going to just look at them. I'm looking at you, too. Right? And remember how in Titus, when talking about a person who is skillful in the knowledge of God, if they cannot govern their own homes, that's one of the attributes that God looks at. So if these husbands and remember, sin makes you a coward. Right. That's my saying. Right? And remember, we've talked about that before. If sin makes you a coward, then these fathers, right, uh, who are going about doing all these things, the fathers and husbands who are doing, makes it difficult for them to, you know, to chastise or correct the children. Just like any of you who have people under your command or your supervisor or manager, you know, you're, you're in good stead. Great, when people see that you are walking or towing the line, as they say, right? But as soon as you commit some, uh, you know, something that is not appropriate, and they see you, that undermines your ability to lead, right? 
So why would that be any different in your home, in communities, in your society, in your churches, right? I tried to lead by example, as I um, mentioned several weeks ago. And it was so filled my heart to be able to confess whatever I may have done, you know, to you, through you, said anything to you. And I still look to the Lord to show me any areas where I may be, um, where I may be terrorizing, <laughs> right? We all want, we should seek to uh, become better and better. And that's why I continue to say, I really appreciate your comments and your questions, uh, your being involved, uh, whether it is in the chat room or through emails. Um, I, I really appreciate it because it helps me to become better, as I say often, iron sharpens iron, but also it helps us to um, to clarify right information that uh, could be misunderstood in, in the past. So if there's any, any area that may have seemed um, uh, not as clear, you know, as it could have been, or if I misspoke in any way, please continue to give me your comments and your questions um, because we want to worship in spirit and in truth and we also want to rightly divide the word of God. Amen. I hope that today's lesson has been a blessing to you and I hope that you're able to see that in all and through all that Hosea, Israel, and Judah went through eventually, right, when they did turn back to God. God did heal their land, and now Israel is a whole place, one whole, no divided, no more divided kingdom, right? And this is that unity, God's correction and judgment brought about the unity and the blessings that he promised through his word. And likewise, we can see that in our own lives on a personal level. As we increase in the knowledge of God, increase in the wisdom of our Lord through reading certainly the pro the Proverbs, all of the Proverbs and um, the Psalms, but the entirety of the message that God has left for us, we can become better and better and better. Amen. And that's what we strive for, particularly if we want to uh, excel at the tests that we're in in this training ground called earth so that we may be brought up in the heavens to meet the Lord in the air where we will be instantly changed into the holiness and the glorified bodies that are fit to be in his presence. Amen. We seek that and we thank you, O Lord, for another opportunity to come before your throne to get more understanding of your word. And Father, please be with everyone here who has listened, whether live or in the recording. Father, open their ears so that they may receive the word from on high and increase their relationship with you. That is my prayer. May God continue to smile upon you and give you his peace. Shalom.